All right, so this video is going to be a walkthrough tutorial on this 6x6 Supercube, which is an eight color design. And if you haven't seen these before, basically, as you can tell, each corner section, each eighth, is one color, and that's how you solve it. And as I mentioned in that uh, 6x6 Super Ball, which is exactly the same puzzle as this, uh, solving strategy wise, it has a lot of different solved states. So no matter how you turn it down the center, these are always in a solved position. So what that means is you have to basically make up what the colors look like when you start the solve and keep it that way for the entire duration of the solve, which just adds a lot more uh, uh, problems that you can run into. And it's actually an extremely difficult solve. And a really important thing to say right away is if you haven't watched my Supercube tutorial and basically mastered that method completely, then you're gonna be completely lost on this tutorial. So go watch that and be really comfortable with that method on a six by six puzzle like this, uh, the Aero Cube or the Pokemon Cube too. You should have these just down. You should have this dialed or else you're just gonna be completely lost on this. But yeah, you should be able to understand really well what's happening on the last couple centers, what shuffle moves are, how all the three cycles work uh, and be able to identify me doing them pretty quick because I don't wanna you know, make this longer than it has to necessarily. So, but anyway, it's going to be pretty uh, involved, but I'm going to try to explain it as well as I can along the way too. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty advanced tutorial, but uh, as with almost anything, it's really not that bad once you understand the basic concept. This is just the same exact thing that we're doing on the uh, on that original Supercube tutorial series. It's just applied in a different way with some little uh, tricks that you can do on this that don't really happen on the uh, traditional supercubes. So aside from just the visual differences between these, this being a pure supercube and this is a hybrid supercube where even though the centers have very specific orientation they have to go into, we have some other characteristics of similar pieces that you don't see on a pure supercube like this where the corners uh, do not have orientation so you can't tell which way they're twisted and also we have similar uh, center pieces within this same colored block and all these edge pieces are identical. So there's some interesting things that happen on this that don't happen on like a Pokemon or Aero Cube that uh, I'll be explaining in a lot of detail here. So how this tutorial is gonna be structured is I'm basically gonna do a complete walkthrough here now and then after this in the same video as you'll see in the description there, I'll just do a bunch of walkthrough examples of the same step over and over again. So uh, it's not the kind of video that you necessarily have to watch all the way through. It's more like a reference manual uh, format where, you know, I'm going to be doing all the centers uh, and the entire walkthrough now, but then the last two center cases, which are the most difficult, uh, just find the links in the description there. If you already understand basic center construction, the first part of this tutorial might be kind of boring and uh, not super useful, but I just want to include it in case, uh, you know, some people out there actually want to see the full uh, construction of the first four centers. So like I just said, I'll be doing the first four centers kind of quick, but you should really have a super strong grasp on basic uh, center construction by now. This is just kind of to uh, tie it all in to not actually uh, accidentally skip over any important steps in case you need them. So basically to start this, you just pick any four colors you want to be on the first center. And for these, I think I'm gonna do, kind of divide it in halves where I'll do some, the warmer colors on one side and then the cooler colors. So the, the first center will be, actually they're already set up like this, will be red, orange, yellow, and white. And then the opposite uh, center will be green, purple, uh, light blue, dark blue. Uh, and it do totally doesn't matter, you can have any colors you want, it'll just keep it a little bit, uh, maybe easier to follow for this tutorial. So let's just start here. Um, this little quadrant, this quadrant will be uh, yellow, this one will be white, this one will be red, and this will be orange. So let's just construct a bar here where it's yellow, yellow, white, white. So we just need to find those other pieces. Like that, and we'll just put that up top and that will be our first center. So let's just build off that and build another yellow, yellow, white, white on the edge here. So that's correct. And then we need a white corner. 
So this is what I mean by doing it kind of fast. You know, you can still follow it, but if uh, if that's a little bit too quick, this is probably going to be a little bit of a rough tutorial for you if that's already uh, too hard to follow. So let's do a red and orange, and it doesn't really matter which one's on top. I'll just uh, kind of do it as I go. I'll do orange on top and red, and we need red down here, and then we need an orange corner. So there's our first center. It's pretty easy stuff. It's just basic uh, six by six center stuff. So once we do that, we're gonna do our opposite uh, center, which will have all the colors that are not on this one. So that's, you know, makes it pretty easy. And uh, maybe we'll start with a light blue and dark blue. That'll be next to each other. I see a light blue here, so we can continue that with a dark blue. Just like that, and we'll bring that up to the top. And let's continue another light blue, dark blue on this side. We already have two there. So those are light blue, dark blue. And I did that. <laughs> I already screwed that up. So <laughs> let's go and fix that. I don't know what I did wrong there. Let's do light blue on top. That might happen a couple times on this tutorial, but uh, it just kind of goes to show that it's really easy to be distracted. And I think I'm just uh, watching the camera instead of <laughs> what I'm doing. So anyway, we'll do a green and purple. Obviously those are the last two colors left. And then purple for these two. That one can swing down there. And we need a purple corner. And like uh, normal Supercube stuff, you can't just bring it up, obviously. We'll bring down an empty area and then bring it back up. But that's super basic. So then another purple can go here. Um, and let's uh, match some greens with it. So that'll be our opposite center, just like that. So that was our first one, the first four, and the second four. So now the next step is we're going to hold it like a normal on the sides here. And now we have to pair these two centers together. So now this actually matters uh, how we're going to hold this for the rest of the solve, kind of. So you just pick two colors and link them together. So it's totally arbitrary. You, you just choose. On this one, I think I'll link uh, light blue and white. So that means these two uh, layers are paired together in how uh, they're oriented, basically. So we're going to create a blue and white block here, which will actually create the uh, pattern for the rest of the centers. And that's how we kind of establish that now. So this top bar will be white, white, blue, blue. Can you see how that'll be blue on these four because of this and white on these four because of this? So it'll be white, white, blue, blue. Okay, so we'll fill in white and light blue there. Just like that. And now we can cont continue another white blue. super efficient but there we go so white and light blue and you can hold these any way now but it's easiest to kind of just keep it lined up like this so we can visually see what we're doing so now we made that the the rest of it will just tell us what to do so now this is orange here this has to be orange here this is purple this has to be purple so it's gonna be orange purple but if we flip this around it'll be orange on this side and purple if you want to look at it that way Like that, and we can always check white, blue, purple, orange. So now we have that as a reference. We can keep that on the top and do another purple, purple, orange, orange. Mm 
Okay, so once we have our third center, let's check again. Light blue, white, orange, purple. So this will now be orange here and purple here. So let's make an orange purple on the top. So that orange lines up here and purple. And we'll just keep building down. These two are already correct, so we can get that out of there. Just built another orange purple. And we'll bring that up. Hopefully this isn't too quick, but this is the least difficult part of this tutorial, believe it or not. <laughs> so this is just basic center stuff. Orange is done, purple is done. We'll move our way down. This is going to be red and green. So red, green means red, green. If we hold it this way. And we already have a red pair here. Okay, now let's check to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Purple, orange, then red, and green. So we just need to continue that red, green there. And these are actually already in place. So there's our red, green, and just realign the centers each time to check. White, blue, purple, Orange, orange, purple, green, red. Okay, so now we're on to our last uh, two centers now. Fifth center is actually pretty easy. It's just basically all commutators. And the last center is really kind of the bulk of this tutorial. That's really the hardest part about this whole thing. So anyway, uh, yeah, let's hold it this way again. So we have red is going to be here and green up here. So we'll just do commutators to move this up. This will be, uh, you know, using this slice and this slice, obviously, to move this piece up. But that's pretty basic. You should know that by now. This red we can move in later. Uh, let's move some greens up there. make sure I haven't messed anything up. It's always good to go back and check everything you've done pretty frequently on this. Let's get that uh, last green in there. And now that freed up our red. Always double check, everything's still good. And now moving down, we have yellow is gonna be here because of that and dark blue. So yellow, dark blue. But if we flip it up, this will be yellow, dark blue. It's easier to see on the top. So we'll go ahead and fill those in. And then dark blue, we'll finish that. And our last dark blue corner. Now let's realign and check everything again. Okay, we have white, blue, purple, orange, green, red, yellow, dark blue. Okay, so now here's the hard part, <laughs> the last center. So how do we fix this without messing everything else up? That's the whole thing, right? <laughs> so uh, like I kind of did in the other main Supercube tutorial, we're gonna work from the center outwards on all this stuff. That's, uh, I think, the easiest way to kind of visualize and organize the solve here. So let's start with white. Let's just put that where it needs to go. Can you see how it needs to go in this corner because of the white, white? And now everything is oriented properly. Uh, all the other centers will tell us, you know, uh, what has to go where. So white needs to go here. Light blue needs to go here. Dark blue needs to go here and yellow here. So remember the one out, one in, three out, or two in, two out? 
sort of uh, situations that we can uh, find on supercube centers. That's what we're looking for here to identify. So this is in. Uh, white is in. Dark blue is out because it's where light blue is. Light blue is out. And yellow is in. So if you remember from the main tutorial, we're going to do a shuffle move on the right side, holding this on the left, and that'll kind of uh, rearrange this for us. So a center shuffle using this layer and this layer, it'll be a right-handed shuffle. And I'll do it kind of slow the first time. Then F, and then the same thing again, right-handed. Now let's just turn this around to check, see what happened. Uh, white will kind of be our home base here. Put that in first, make sure that's correct. Then light blue is good, dark blue is good, and yellow is good. So now that we've done that, we don't really have to focus on the other centers too much because this inner 2x2 two two, uh, center is now completely solved and we can use this to kind of map out the rest of this border. These four colors, even though it looks doesn't look any more solved than it was, you know, a minute ago. This is now going to uh, dictate what this outer border has to be. So this is the dark blue corner, this is the yellow corner, this is the white corner, and this is the light blue corner. So I think uh, you can approach this a couple different ways from here. We only have uh, three types of piece left. We have both types of the wings and then the corners. Uh, let's do the corners next because it kind of uh, visually makes the wings easier to identify if they're in or out. So corners, uh, this is, I'll, I'll just say yes or no from now on if it's in the right place or not. So this is no, based on, always based on these inner four. No, 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 no. So now we'll see which way a piece has to move to be solved. If we want to solve the white first, and it doesn't really matter the order, this would have to move to this place here. And you remember from the main tutorial, we want that movement to be on the top and to be flat. So we'll rotate it this way. You could ro rotate the whole puzzle too. It doesn't matter what other center you work through also. We'll be coming back to that in a second. Uh, so we're going to do a shuffle. So based on this visual layout, I know this is kind of like pretty abstract to visualize this. And the recognition is really the most difficult part about this. But based on what I see here, we need to do a left-handed corner shuffle. And that will get this white in the proper place so we can uh, continue to solve the rest of the corners. So this will move this white piece here to be solved. It'll be a left-handed corner shuffle. Up, over, up, over, down, over, down, over, and then F prime, and then the same left-handed three cycle. Up, over, up, over, down, over, down, over. Now let's check. It's always a good idea to check everything else to make sure you haven't messed anything up. So now the white is solved. So then we have uh, yes, no, no, no. So we have a one in, three out. This is our standard setup case that we want to see when we're going into a shuffle move like this. So now, as I talked about a million times in the original tutorial, the main uh, pattern for this is you have a one in, three out. You look directly diagonally across from the solved one. You target this piece and you ask yourself, which way does it have to move to be solved? So the solved one, opposite, this has to move this way to be solved. Can you see that? The yellow needs to roll this way to line up with the yellow. We want that movement in the top, which it already is, or else we'd have to move this. So this motion is going to be a left-handed shuffle, and that will solve the rest of these centers. So let's check our work. Solved, 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 solved. So now you can kind of see that X pattern. That'll be an easier reference for these wings. So let's do uh, Let's do clockwise. Uh, actually, yeah, nothing is in, so it doesn't matter. So uh, calling this clockwise and that counterclockwise, you know, if you uh, go out from the center, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, so this is no, 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 
No, they're, none of them are solved. So um, let's take a look at uh, this light blue here, this clockwise light blue wing. Where does that have to go in order to be solved? Well, this is the light blue quadrant. So this has to end up here where that white piece is. So that motion, we want to be on top. We're going to be doing a shuffle move here. So that motion across on top means a right-handed shuffle because we're kicking this piece up to the right using that layer and the outside layer. So I know that's confusing. That's the hardest part about this tutorial is recognizing which case to use and how to hold it. Um, but trust me, it won't be that bad after you do a couple uh, practice runs through solving this. So anyway, to get this blue here, it'll be a right-handed shuffle. Check we didn't make any mistakes. Now let's check to see what that did. It put it in the right place. So that light blue is correct. Now let's check all the other uh, pieces in that group. So this is yes. No, no, no. So it's a one in, three out, which is what we want to set up for the next uh, shuffle move to solve the rest of the wings. So I'll put this in the bottom. We move directly across within the same group is this yellow piece, That uh, sorry, <laughs> this white piece, that's our target piece. That white piece needs to roll this way, that motion to be solved and that will solve the rest of the wings in that group. So because that is the motion, as you can see in that pattern there, it's a left-handed shuffle using this layer and this layer. And that will solve all of those uh, first four wings. And I'll do this a little quicker. Now let's check to see what that did. Clockwise, we have yes, no, no, no. Okay, so I'm glad we actually ran into this problem because normally uh, this would be considered a kind of parody situation that I talked about in the normal tutorial where I thought that was going to do it actually, but now we have a two in, two out. Uh, so what does this mean? Um, it's actually slightly different than on your, uh, you know, uh, arrow cube, Pachman cube, the uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, pure super cube. This is a little bit different. So how we're going to handle this, um, we, we have, uh, this problem only happens because we have, like I talked about originally, similar pieces because these centers are indistinguishable from these ones. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to kick out one of these wings in that group to a matching color on an opposite side or an adjacent side which will actually present us with either a solved case or a one in three out scenario. So I know this kind of <laughs> might be really hard to follow, but uh, trust me, if you know, you'll, you'll get this if you just hang in there. It's going to be a little rough the first time through, though. So um, for that to happen, we're still in this uh, clockwise group, meaning this blue, this yellow, which are both out, and then this blue, which is in, and this white, which is in. We're going to put those on the bottom. Because what we want to do is we want to kick out either this yellow or this blue to uh, a matching side up here. And, but we don't want to mess up any other side, so it has to be yellow, and it has to be in the same exact place. So if you can follow me on this, what we're going to do, uh, and I just figured this stuff out like a couple days ago, so um, hopefully I'm explaining this okay. Um, but you know, that kind of is a, a testament to the uh, original tutorial I did that it's the same method. It's just, you know, kind of applying it in, in a skewed way. Um, it's just a different angle of looking at the same problem, basically. So what we can do is we can kick this yellow out to somewhere on this center, which means in that three cycle, this is not a shuffle, it's just a standard one three cycle. That piece will come down here and this blue will roll over this way. 
and that will solve this. So this yellow is going to be kicked up to this green. So we want that piece to be yellow. Um, wait, let me think about that. Yes, we want this piece to be yellow because doing this, this yellow will move up here and be indistinguishable from what's already there. So it's still solved. Then this exact yellow piece will roll down to this position and solve this yellow uh, quadrant there or that, you know, that group within that quadrant. And then this blue will roll over here and solve that. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, this is just the main walkthrough. I'm going to be doing, you know, maybe four or five or six uh, individual different last center cases. So you'll see the same thing over and over again. So this is going to be a single three cycle using a right handed three cycle using this layer and this layer. And that will solve these pieces, hopefully. Let's see. Just like that. So in clockwise, we have, based on this middle four, yes, 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 yes. So that's basically, that's pretty much as, as tricky as this gets. Um, that is, <laughs> until we get to this guy. So um, now let's look in the opposite direction. Uh, the last group here. These, uh, let's uh, do counterclockwise. So this is based on the blue, no, 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 no. They're all out, even though this is a little misleading because you would think that that's good, but it's not. Um, so let's see what we need to do. This yellow needs to roll over left. So let's do a left-handed shuffle with this layer and these two layers to get this yellow over here first to set it up. Okay, let's check out what that did. I was looking at the uh, viewfinder there. I kind of got lost in what I was doing. So, uh, yeah, yellow is in now. So in counterclockwise, we have uh, yes, no, yes, no. So this is another two in, two out scenario. And when we see that on this type of puzzle, which is kind of a parody situation, we are just going to swap out one of these pieces with the same color one on an adjacent side, which will kind of give us a standard three cycle uh, shuffle case. So, and you can do this through any adjacent center that has a similar color. So you'll kind of be twisting this all around. And, um, but basically, let's, um, let's kick out this white piece to an adjacent white side. So because this has to go up to this position, we want that to be white so that this stop, uh, top face will still be solved and we're not messing it up. So this will be just a single three cycle, not a shuffle move. Um, with uh, left-handed with this layer and this layer to bring down a new white piece. We're just going to swap those. So that's unaffected. Now let's look to see what kind of case we have now. In uh, counterclockwise, we have no, yes, no, no. So this is a standard one in, three out, which is what we want. This yellow is good, so moving across is that white. Ask yourself which way it has to go. That opposite piece has to go this way to replace that blue. This will be a right-handed shuffle move. Just like that. And that is our last center. Let's just do a final check. Realign everything, make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Okay, now we can look at the full corners. We have, you know, looking at the centers, yellow, dark blue, white, light blue, orange, purple, red, and green. So that is how you do the centers on a puzzle like this. I know that's probably uh, pretty weird, but um, 
don't worry, I'm going to do a bunch of other walkthroughs of that uh, using different colors and all that sort of stuff uh, once I complete this full uh, walkthrough here. Okay, so now moving on to edges. Um, the edges are not as bad as the centers um, to figure out for the first time, but there is a little bit of a strange order that we want to do them in just to keep it a little bit more organized. And then the last two will be a little bit tricky too, but I'll, I'll get to that when we, when we get to it. So basically what I want to do here is each time just realign all the centers so that they're solved, just so we can kind of visually see this better. Um, I'm going to use the white as kind of a home base. We're going to start there again. And so this is the order I want to do all the edges in. Uh, and you should do this each time just so it's easier to keep track. Um, the main reason for this is, uh, well, two part. One, to kind of have more organiz organization in the solve. But then the last two centers are kind of important. You want them to share one similar color. So on your last two center case, you don't want uh, like yellow, light blue, or sorry, you don't want uh, white, light blue, orange, yellow. You don't want four different colors. You want to have like white, light blue, light blue, orange, or something like that. Any version of that where there's three, there's only three different colors. You share a color because we're going to be swapping pieces. Kind of the same method where we were swapping center pieces with similar ones to avoid some sort of parity situation. Um, hopefully that makes sense, but don't worry, we'll, we'll see that when we get to it. But the general organization of this, uh, let's hold it like this. The first three groups I want to do is this group, this group, and this group, like these first three edges here. Then after that, I'm just going to go around the perimeter. So one, two, three, and then you do this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Um, and just, it, it's easier to kind of keep track. You'll see as we go, you just kind of do, you know, those three, and then we'll do the uh, light blue purple, and then we'll do the purple orange, and then we'll do the orange red, then the red yellow, then the or yellow dark blue, then the dark blue light blue, and so on. So we'll have all those done, and then we'll only have three edges to do that will be on the opposite side, which means that they'll force to be have... Uh, they'll force to uh, have a similar color, which will be green. So hopefully that doesn't <laughs> sound super confusing, but you'll kind of see how this goes. But other than that, it's a pretty similar kind of basic edge pairing thing that'll go on. So first are the three white ones. Let's do, um, let's do white uh, and yellow. So we already have a, and it's kind of like a free slicing thing. I'm, it's not super efficient, but uh, this is just kind of how I'm going to do it here. So I'm sure, and by the way, I'm not a speed cuber at all. I'm sure you probably already know that. Uh, for all you speed cubers out there, you know, watch this tutorial and then just come up with your way more efficient ways to do it. Uh, this is just kind of the, uh, the easiest way that makes sense to me, at least. For someone who <laughs> doesn't care about how fast you go. So um, yeah, white, yellow. These are already paired, so let's just pair any yellow. It's actually pretty easy to find since there's so many of each. Now, this is important. This is one of the biggest mistakes you'll make uh, when doing this. You'll notice now, this is dangerous because when I go to pair this yellow over, normally on centers, you know, a normal like N by N, if it's just all green, you obviously mess up the green side. But when you're turning down the center on edge pairing, be really careful that you turn it back the same way because you can't really tell if it's messed up because it's already like that, if that makes any sense. So be really careful about slicing down the center and returning properly. That's really important. Anyway, let's do that uh, yellow pair, return properly. Make sure you know it's if it's a 180 or 90 degree uh, move you did. Let's find that other yellow. And again, I'll be going through this kind of quick because this is like super, super basic um, edge pairing stuff. And you don't have to worry about where it ends up. Just kind of remember one piece at a time what you just did. Um, and then return these centers so you can just kind of keep track of what you're doing. So we did the white yellow. Now let's do the white light blue. We have a light blue already, so we'll pair some white to it. And we have a white here too. So this is going to be a, a 180 turn down the center and return properly. Okay, just realign this each time. Not super efficient, but just to kind of show you. So we've done that one, that one. Now we'll do the white and orange.
Get those two oranges and the last two white with that. Okay, and let's realign centers. So now we've done those first main three that I talked about. Now we're just gonna go around the perimeter and do these other six. Um, so let's we can start anywhere. Let's just do uh, yellow, uh, dark blue, and then we'll just move clockwise around just to kind of keep it organized. Uh, so you can easily know what you have to do next. Um, so let's do yellow, dark blue. There's some yellows there. Actually, I see a dark blue pair, and let's uh, add that last yellow to where it needs to go. So don't worry about where it lands um, as long as it's done. And then we'll just go back, there it is, but we'll go back to our main thing here. Uh, so we just did yellow, dark blue. Let's do, go clockwise again dark blue, light blue. So you always just kind of have the repeated color again. We'll do dark blue, light blue next. Here's a light blue, and here's a dark blue. Okay, realign. We did dark blue, light blue. Uh, now we'll do light blue, purple. Let's find another light blue. Oh, it's already there, okay. <laughs> so I'll have to kick it out. Let's add a purple to there. And we need a light blue there. Hopefully that's in frame. There you go. So this light blue will go up here. Just like that. Now back here we just did light blue purple. Move around to purple orange. Let's realign those white together. Just like that. Now, uh, what do we just do? Purple, orange. Now we'll do uh, orange, red. We have two reds together there. And find that last orange. Okay, and let's realign. And I don't remember, let's see if we did a red yellow already. I don't think we did. No, that might be the last one. So red, yellow. Where are all the yellows? Do we need a yellow green? Hmm, interesting. So let me just uh, realign all the centers to check this really quick. I think I see what's going on. Yeah, so this is a little bit misleading, again, with this, uh, <laughs> with this type of design. Here we have what looks like to be a, a solved pair. This is actually incorrect because here on the centers, um, yellow and green are opposite. They'll never be a yellow and green paired edge. So even though it looks right, we have to break this apart, and this needs to be yellow and red instead. So watch out for those kind of cases too. We have a red up here. We can break this apart. Okay, let's realign the white. So now, um, let's see if we only have three left to do. One, two. I believe we only have three. Let me check. So the bottom is all solved. The back two solved. This, 
this, this. Okay, good. So we have this one, this one, and this one are our three. So um, let's do, let's realign the centers actually so we can see what we need. But it'll be a green and blue and then a green, let's see, is that correct? Yeah, green, blue, green, red, and green, purple. That's what it looks like at least. So let's uh, finish this green, red. That'll be the quickest to do next. We'll just bring that red over. Okay, now let's make sure that's just the last two. Okay, so now onto the last two edge case. Let's see what we have here. So right away uh, we have um, green, purple, and green, blue. So these middle ones are already basically solved the way we want. So um, now actually first, uh, Actually, actually, before I explain this, I'm going to explain a case on the arrow cube to kind of show you uh, what's actually happening here. Okay, so on this arrow cube is just an example case. Uh, say we're just don't worry about anything else other than these two center groups. I know they're solved right now, but the uh, green, white, and the red, yellow. So on this normal move that we do on the last um, two for the super cubes, you know where you bring an edge down, do the flipping algorithm, and then bring it back. That's what we're going to be using again, but I just want to show you what happens actually. So, and I'll be referring to these as either right-handed or left-handed too. So right-handed means we bring a piece down on the right, left-handed we bring a piece down on the left. So from a solved state, I just want to show you a right-handed one so we can see exactly what's happening to the front and the, and the back one too. And then the flip algorithm. and then return. So don't worry about anything else other than these two pairs. So we can see what happened is this flipped over and then these pieces were kind of, you know, three cycled in a way. So that's going to be important. So basically, you know, how to solve this now is this is the case you would look for. You would bring this piece in to be solved. Do the flip uh, do the flipping algorithm which will flip this over. So this red and yellow will end up here, and then when you return it, it will be solved again here, right? So it's just important to know exactly what's going on, because that's how we're going to actually apply it to this. Um, although you don't see the same pattern in the same way, you just have to know that this is actually how these pieces are moving around. And the diagonal movement from this going back to here is kind of what we want to target in this movement. So to solve it, you know, bring that down, flipping algorithm, flip that front edge over and then return. And that's how you solve that case. So on this one, that's kind of that diagonal motion of a piece moving back diagonally to the back row. That's kind of what we're going to be focusing on. Um, so uh, in a way, it's a little bit counterintuitive. Normally we target what's facing us, but now we're going to be kind of targeting the one in the back. I, I find it to be a little easier that way. So, um, and you have to do just you kind of just have to mess around with it. It's not super efficient, I don't think. Uh, you have to do a couple of those moves in different ways, but you'll see what what happens here. So uh, this one needs to be green, green, dark blue, dark blue. So we want another dark blue here. So remember that that movement. Uh, it moves. We want a piece to move from here to there to be dark blue. So this dark blue has to be right here in order to move diagonally back here. So let's just, without bringing anything down, just normally flip this edge over. That, that's all that was affected. And now a left-handed one, how we can remember it, is a left-handed uh, bring the piece down, uh, <laughs> flipping move thing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the piece in the back left will have the diagonal movement. And then the right-handed, the piece in the back right, will have that diagonal movement. That's how you can kind of remember that. So we want to do a left-handed version of it because that's going to bring this dark blue here to solve that layer. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's try that. There. 
dark blue is back. So that's solved, and that's solved. Uh, sometimes there's more, actually usually there's more complicated versions where you have to mess some pieces around uh, up here, and then what we end up doing is transferring one of these greens back and forth because those can be swapped basically and you can't tell and uh, that's some cases that I'll run into again when I do a bunch of the other additional walkthrough steps but I'll just continue on this solve now so hopefully as long as I didn't royally screw anything up there which on a puzzle like this is probably more uh, often than you might think um, you know for when you're first learning this stuff this should reduce down basically like a three by a three by three solve now and uh, yeah, let's just go through that super basic uh, three by three uh, method. So just, you know, pick any center. Let's just, uh, I think this is what the actual first center we started with. Let's just find the uh, yellow and white and align that to a yellow and white. Remember like basic super cube stuff, you have to realign it to the center. You can't just make your cross, right? Uh, this piece, we gotta flip that over. I'm not really going to explain what I'm doing here. This is like so easy. I mean, if you can't understand this, you you you, you were lost a long time ago in this tutorial. So, um, and again, you can tell that I'm not a speed cuber by my <laughs> really basic three by three strategy. But you know, it works. And the last one, red yellow. Remember, you can turn this twice. You flip this over so you don't mess it up. And the nice thing about this, again, is corners do not have orientation, so they're just immediately correct. So there's our first layer. Check with all the centers, make sure they're good. Um, feel free to do some sort of F2L thing if you want uh, <laughs> to be more efficient on that, but uh, this is basic. I'm just using beginner strategy here. Let's find a uh, blue and white to move down. Find a red, uh, green, there, orange, purple, and dark blue, yellow. Okay, that's the first two layers, or first five layers, I guess. <laughs> um, now let's uh, see which pieces are flipped the right way. That's correct. So yes. Uh, yes, no, no, okay, so we're getting our cross, which looks nothing like a cross, but that's, <laughs> that's kind of the nature of this puzzle, right? Can you see that there? And you also will notice now that we have a 90 degree center rotation as of right now. So we'll see how uh, we're going to deal with that in just a second. Uh, which I guess is <laughs> right now. So um, let's uh, move these corners around. So this is correct. Okay, so this is one of the more strange cases that you'll get with something like this. Um, so as you'll know, you know, with a puzzle like this, a pure supercube, this will never happen. You will never uh, find a last center that's rotated by 90 degrees off. And as you should probably know by now, uh, the difference between these is obviously this one has similar pieces, which create weird cases like this, and that's why parity actually happens on a normal puzzle. But So as we did with the last center, and you can do with the last edge too, if you run into an impossible or impossible case like this, you can just replace one of these uh, two by two groups with a similar one which should either solve it or present you with a case that can be solved normally. Unfortunately, now it's a little bit weird because everything else is solved. You don't want to really backtrack too much. Um, so hopefully I can walk this through okay. So um, what I want to try to do is uh, kick one of these pieces out to a similar uh, side and bring that piece back down to this so hopefully we can solve it like normal. Although I don't want to mess up my edges and have to redo a three by three stage. So let's see if I can do that accurately, which will mean uh, when doing our three cycle, don't just turn this as a group, we're going to turn those two as a group, and then kind of position this properly to try not to mess everything else up. But we'll see how that goes. 
Um, so let's maybe let's think about this. Let's hold it this way, and I want to kick this light blue piece out, which means I want to bring this light blue piece back. So it's going to be a left-handed. You could do right-handed too if you held it this way, but. Here, we'll do a left-handed three cycle. This moves up here, this moves up down here, and this rolls over. So we want this light blue to be here. Can you see that? So the setup is gonna be U2. Now we'll do a left-handed three cycle, kind of treating this as a four by four, where that's a layer and that's a layer. You can see how we're gonna do that. Um, yeah, so U2 and a left-handed three cycle. Let's see if we can get this to work. And let's just always realign this to make sure everything's gonna be okay. And we didn't mess up anything else, thank goodness. So back to the last center. Let's see what we have. You should be able to recognize this, as uh, I said a bunch of times in all these different cases, um, you know, the one in, three out versus uh, two in, two out difference. Uh, before, basically two in, two out is kind of the same thing as a 90 degree center rotation in a way. But now we can see this is solved. So we have one in, three out. So that's what we want. Um, now we can basically uh, do a shuffle move here to get these back. So basically what this is reduced down to is this is now the last center of a four by four super cube. That's how you need to picture this because this is like one, two, three, four layers. That's how we're gonna be treating this. So as with always, um, this is solved. Look diagonally across <laughs> here, figure out which way this has to roll over to to be solved and that's the direction of motion that we want in this uh, three cycle, in this shuffle move, sorry. So we want that motion to be on the top this way. And instead of rotating this, we'll just rotate the whole puzzle to kind of keep everything as solved as possible. So blue is correct. Purple needs to roll over this way to be solved. That's a right-handed shuffle in this kind of triangular motion. Hopefully I will not <laughs> mess this up and have to restart it. Uh, but hopefully this will solve it. So again, not turning these outer layers or else you have to go back and redo some stuff. So let's try a right-handed shuffle. And then for the F move, let's see, what do I want to do? This might mess up some centers, will it? Boom. Whew, yeah, that's pretty stressful. <laughs> so I, I figured that would uh, work okay, it's just... Um, you know, each time you get to that case, uh, it's a little tricky. So, um, and to be honest, that's <laughs> that's actually the first time I've done that case. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, that's yeah, that's how you do it. So that is a solve, and uh, yeah, probably should have uh, maybe should have practiced this a little bit more. <laughs> but uh, that's what happens when uh, I've, I I think that was probably. I don't know, maybe the third or fourth solve I've done on this. I've actually not yet run into that case, but uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> you saw me figure it out on the fly. So that's how you do it. That's, uh, and I knew kind of, you know, I knew the theory of that's what you would, uh, that's what you would do when you uh, get to that case. And the last one, I just, you know, you could actually do probably five solves and never run into that last case. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the probability of that is, but uh, generally that's how you'll do it. Uh, normally, and I'll, I'll definitely make sure we run into this in some other, uh, what I'll do now and all the individual walkthroughs, um, we all do like a that standard kind of uh, two little r two u um, parity uh, fix algorithm. Uh, that will uh, you'll see some problems with the center rotation uh, when we get to that too. So, but yeah, that's basically how you solve this puzzle. Um, 
pretty difficult, I think, uh, as far as super cubes go. I, I think it's definitely more challenging than this. This is actually um, pretty straightforward. Uh, <laughs> and then you go back to a standard 6x6, six six and it's just like way too easy. But of course, then it's all about, you know, speed cubing and doing it super fast, which I don't necessarily uh, have any interest myself in. Obviously, it's a totally different kind of uh, difficulty, which is, you know, totally respectable, but uh, it's just not something I do. But uh, when it comes to like really difficult uh, strategy uh, in puzzle like this, that's really obviously um, what I'm more interested in. So anyway, that is the full walkthrough. And now I'll just um, go through a bunch of different uh, steps that are all the same uh, back to back. And feel free to just choose whatever you want in the uh, links there, uh, the timestamps. And uh, yeah, hopefully you didn't need a lot of that uh, center walkthrough stuff, like the first four centers. but uh, yeah, just if you have any trouble with the last center, just go and watch a couple of those examples, and yeah, hopefully that helps. Okay, so this is going to be another last two centers walkthrough, and uh, we'll start with the top face here. We can see how light blue and green are there, so there's going to be a light blue and green on the top. And again, for the fifth center, it's basically all commutators, and then the last center is the actual uh, kind of difficult part. So we'll start to get the uh, light blue pieces up here. like that and then we'll continue the green for these four and check so blue is done green is done now this has to be white here, and this has to be purple. So white and purple. And it's actually already put in place, but let's put that on the top. It's a little bit easier to do. So continue these white. And then the two purple. And let's realign just to check the centers. So blue is good, green, purple, and white. So that stuff should be pretty easy. It's pretty much identical to the standard uh, Supercube uh, fifth center. So I won't. Do, I don't think I'll do uh, any more walkthroughs on that. Just uh, the last center from now on, because that's actually the uh, the difficult part here. So anyway, so let's see what we need to do here. This is the white. So this has to be white here, purple orange and yellow um, we actually just put the yellow there that is correct and same as before let's just start in these middle four and see what we need to do um, so yellow is correct that's yes yes for orange no and no so these two are switched so we're gonna hold it this way and because these two need to be switched basically um, we're going to do a shuffle move, a right-handed shuffle, using this layer and this layer to get us started with the center. Now let's check, put the yellow back in place here and see if that lined up. Yellow is good, orange is good. Purple is good, and white. So now we can just use this inner four uh, as our reference for the rest of the center. Uh, and same as before, let's move out to the corners now. So we have uh, no, 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 no. They're all out. Um, we can move this white over this way with a shuffle, uh, that motion on top, which will line up with this. So that'll be a left-handed corner shuffle to place that white corner there.
Okay, now we have white is in, out, in, out. Um, so again, like we have a two in, two out case, we are going to kick out one of the pieces uh, to an adjacent center that it'll match it up with the same color so we can actually have a one in, three out, or a solved case. Um, so in this case we have diagonals, so it's going to mess up one of the solved ones anyway, but that's okay. Um, let's find where we can put this uh, yellow. And we're going to have to turn this over this way. Uh, it doesn't matter how we, uh, which center you work through as long as it's yellow. So we're going to kick this yellow. Um, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm going to do it this way. So this yellow here is going to go up and replace this, and that yellow is going to come down. So, and let's see, that might actually solve this because um, for the corners, oh no, it won't. But let's uh, let's start with that anyway. So yellow shuffle to replace this yellow. I'm sorry, just a yellow single three cycle for that. So that's unaffected. Now let's look what happened with our center here. Uh, based on the center two by two, our corners are in out, out, out. So one in, three out, that's what we want. Let's put the in one in the bottom, look directly across. This corner has to move this way to this position. Let's put that on the top. You could just rotate the whole puzzle too. So this yellow needs to go this way. So this triangular motion, that's a right-handed shuffle on the corners, which will hopefully solve uh, the rest of these here. Okay, let's check. In, 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 in. Good, so that's how you do the corners. Uh, now, moving on to the wings. Let's start with uh, clockwise. We have out, out, in, out. So that's good, one in, three out. Hold this one in the bottom, look directly across, diagonally, in the same group. This yellow has to roll over this way to this position. We want that on top. We just hold it like this. So this yellow has to move to where this purple is. That motion is a right-handed shuffle, which looks like this. Now let's check clockwise based on this inner four by four and the corners. In, 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 so that solved it. And now let's look for uh, counterclockwise. We have out, in, out, out. So the white is in again. Look directly across. There's the yellow. The yellow needs to move over this way to be solved. That motion is a right-handed shuffle using this layer and this layer. It looks like this. There you go, that's another last center case. And as always, let's just double check, realign all our centers, make sure it's actually correct. So we have yellow, white, purple, orange, red, green, light blue, dark blue. So yeah, and I'll do a couple more of those. Okay, so another last center case. Everything is done except for this last center here. So. Uh, we look at it this way. This has to be purple, green, orange, and red. So first, as always, we start with this inner 2x2. Two two. And uh, let's put the orange here and see which centers line up. So the orange is in, the purple is in, but the red and green are switched. Can you see that? So when you have a case like this, uh, pretty much you always either get this or uh, the solved position or a, a very similar case. So what you want to do is hold the two that look uh, appear to be switched in the right and then do a right-handed shuffle move. Or you could hold the red and green in the left and do a left-handed shuffle. And that will look like this, uh, right-handed in this case.
Okay, now let's realign the center. So orange is in, purple's in, green is in, and red is in. Okay, so now this is correct. We can use this to uh, base the rest of the center on. Now for the corners, next. Uh, and you could do a wings next, actually, but it's a little bit easier to visualize when you have the corners in before the wings. So this is out, out, in, out. That's what we want. It's a one in, three out. Find the solid one, look directly across within the same group. This red needs to move to this position here to be solved. And we can just rotate the puzzle this way, actually. Um, it needs to move this way. So that's a left-handed shuffle that will solve uh, this case here. Left-handed corner. Okay, so in, 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 in. Okay, so moving on to wings for clockwise, we have out, in, in, out. So the green and red are correct, but this purple and orange need to be switched. So uh, with one three cycle, we can solve this because this orange needs to go out, which will pull this uh, with the right handed. The orange goes out, it'll rotate this purple into place, and an orange needs to come back down to here. So this orange needs to replace an orange up here. So let's position it so that when this orange moves up, it will go into this place and be solved. This orange will come down here and be solved, and this purple will go over here and be solved. So a single right-handed three cycle will solve this case. Just like that. So let's check clockwise. In, 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 in. Now, uh, you can tell that this half is completely done so we have a very similar case here, where counterclockwise, we have uh, in, in, out, out. Obviously, these two, the red and green, are just switched. Uh, so what that means is uh, we could do this a couple different ways. We could either do a right-handed move that will kick this green out and bring the red into place, or we can do a left-handed move from here, which will kick this red out and move the green into place. Um, let's do that. I think we did it right-handed last time. So let's find another center with red that that can match up to. So this will move up here, but we want the red to match the same position. So a single left-handed three cycle will solve this case here. Just like that. And that's pretty much it. That's another last center case. Okay, another last center case. So everything else is solved in the centers. This has to be white, light blue, green, and purple. So let's uh, just match that purple up and see what else is lined up or not. This is in, out, because that has to be white, out, because that has to be blue, and out. So purple is good. But yeah, so uh, in, out, out, out. Uh, so this is a one in, three out case. Uh, we can do a shuffle. We can look across to the white. The white has to move over this way to be solved. So we can do a left-handed uh, shuffle, starting with this layer right here. Uh, let's check our centers, purple. Yeah, centers are still good. So, uh, actually the white was put into place here. So if white is in, out, 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 we can move directly across to the blue and move that over here. It's a left-handed shuffle. Now our uh, corners are solved, in, 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 and in. Let's look at the uh, clockwise wings. Starting here with the purple, that's out, because that needs to be light blue. So out, in, out, out. 
Uh, so the green is the only one that's in. We can look directly across the group to the blue needs to move over this way to that position so we can hold that on the top and that motion is a right-handed shuffle that will bring the blue into this position here. Okay, so clockwise we have in, 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 and in. So now counterclockwise we have the green is in, out, out, out. So we can just hold that on the bottom, look across the group directly. This blue needs to roll over this way to that position. So it's going to be a right-handed shuffle using that layer and that layer to move that blue into place. So that looks like this. And that does it. Let's just recheck our centers. And yep, everything is good. Okay, so this will be the final last center walkthrough. Hopefully it's uh, pretty clear by this point. So uh, we have red has to be here, dark blue, yellow, and orange. So let's go ahead and put an orange in place and see how the, how the rest fall into place here. This is in, out, out, out. So uh, we can do a shuffle left-handed. This red will move over this way to be solved. And we're going to kick that yellow up on the left. So orange is in, red is in, dark blue is in, and yellow is in. And actually this is a super easy case because it just so happens our corners are all solved as well. You can see those four. Uh, let's move on to clockwise wings. We have out, out, in, out, one in, three out. Uh, let's see, uh, this is in, so moving directly across, this yellow needs to move over this way. So that's gonna be a right-handed shuffle here. I'll do this a little bit quicker just so uh, you can hopefully follow along. Uh, so yeah, this is a right-handed shuffle. So clockwise, in, 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 in. Counterclockwise, we have out, 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 in. So red is in, move directly across the group. Orange needs to move over this way. Kicking the blue piece up, that'll be a right-handed shuffle to solve this here. And that's pretty much it. Let's just check our alignment here. Red, dark blue, yellow, orange, purple, white, light blue, green. And that's uh, one of the trickiest parts about this solve here. Okay, so moving on to some last edge cases. Uh, the first one will do the last three centers, and then from there I think I'll just do the last two, uh, because you'll probably get it at that point. So in this one, we have a red is the dominant color, which is opposite from that same uh, method I did before, where white and then red is the final three, like that. So, uh, yeah, our three unsolved pairs are here. So it's going to be a red-orange, a red-green, and a red-dark-blue. So I see here a red-dark-blue is almost done. So let's uh, get one of those in the, in the top here and then put this last dark-blue into place. Now we should have just our final uh, last two edges. Okay, so now we have our last two, and this one looks a little confusing because it's red all the way across. So these are our two. Uh, first thing we want to do is split up these reds, because obviously we never have a solid color across the middle like this. So just to split up these reds, we'll just bring half of it down and do the flipping algorithm in return and hopefully that didn't mess up any centers, and that will just split up those reds. Um, okay, so now we need a red-green and a red 
the orange. This is a very typical case you'll get where that needs to go there and the orange needs to go there. So again, targeting the back here, let's try to get a green into this position. So uh, it'll be bringing a piece down on the right. It'll be right-handed. So the diagonal movement is going to be like this. So this targeted area needs to be green. So this green piece has to be here. So let's flip that over first. Okay, so once we have this green set up on this side, it'll be a right hand, bring that piece down, which will move this back here to solve this back uh, edge group. So I'll bring it down. And then return. So that solves this one. And very often you'll run into this sort of case. Uh, so what we need to do is basically replace this red with this red. So uh, what we need to do is we want to, actually, I think it's already set up properly, where this red is going to travel back here to replace that. It'll look the same, although we're just going to be able to flip this around a little differently. So this is the proper way to hold it. And we're going to bring this on a left-handed one, the red piece down this way, which will give us this diagonal movement. If this orange piece was here, we'd have to flip this over first to have it set up like this. So the red is going to be going to red. So left hand looks like this. And then return. And that will solve your last two edges. Okay, so another last two edges case. Uh, we have all white here and then alternating blue and yellow. Again, this is the kind of thing you want where you'll have four of one color and then two of the other. So you need to have uh, this, this grouping is going to be white and yellow and white and blue. So they need to share a common color, in this case, white. So we need to break this up. Um, so we'll just split it down the middle and flip this just to break up those whites. And return carefully. So now the whites are actually paired up nicely. And we have a similar case to what we just had. Um, to target this back one, we want blue to go here but we can't just put it like that. So we need to flip this over first so that the blue is going to be here so that we can do a right-handed move, which will diagonally move the blue back this way. So we'll just flip this over regular. And now it's set up properly for a right-handed where this blue will move over and solve this back one here. So we'll bring it down on the right and return. So now that's solved. And now this similar case here, where we want to basically replace this white with this white, and it's already set up properly. So we'll do uh, bring it down on the left, which will kick this one back to here. So that looks like this. And return your centers. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now their last two edge case. So in this one, it's going to be dark blue, light blue, and dark blue, yellow. Again, sharing dark blue is the dominant color. So for this one, uh, if we target this back piece, we need this to be a light blue. So diagonally forward, this is actually correct in the correct position for this light blue to move back here by bringing this down on the left and flipping. And then returning the center. That will solve this back one. And we get this typical case here. Uh, so what we need to do is replace this dark blue with one of these, that dominant color. So this is actually correct for a uh, to bring it down on the right to replace that one. And that solves it. Okay, and I think this will be the final uh, last two edge case. So in this one, uh, green is our dominant color. We'll have green and red and green and light blue. So uh, to fix this back one, this needs to be light blue, which is already here. So this will be a left-handed where we bring a piece down on the left to have that diagonal movement to bring this blue back to this position here. Which solves it, and we get this typical case here. So because green is our dominant color, our shared color, 
we need to replace this green with this one basically. It's already set up correctly, so this is going to be a right-handed move. Bring it down on the right and flip it. Return. And that's it. Okay, now I'll do some last layer walkthroughs. Just uh, give you a couple examples here. So, just using a kind of standard beginner strategy, although it just looks really weird on this kind of puzzle. Uh, let's look for edge orientation first. See which is flipped the right way. And uh, let's... So, this is correct. This is good. This is out. This is out. And this is out. So, uh, let's see what we want to do here. It's out. Let me just check this again. So, this looks like it's going to be a parity situation. Uh, so, what we want to do is that uh, standard parity algorithm because we have that one, you know, one in normally on the center, so that's kind of the case you want. Um, but in this one, uh, you want to see either two or all of them. So let's try that uh, typical uh, parity edge flip algorithm. And of course, that messes up a center. You could do a center safe one. Uh, actually, could you? I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> let's just fix that back then. And then fix those edges. Okay. And now let's see what that did, if that helped at all. So this is correct. This is out. This is out. This is in. So these two are good. So that gives us an L shape here. Even though it doesn't look like it. Now they should all be oriented correctly. This is good, 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 and good. Okay, so now we have this uh, bar. So now all of them are placed properly. Now let's look at our corners, move those around. Yellow is correct, so hold it this way. So now, as you can see, we've ran into the same case that I got in the first entire walkthrough, where we get this 90 degree center rotation, uh, which is impossible in a standard, um, you know, pure supercube. So we need to replace one of these two by two groups by a similar one, and kind of treat this uh, as a four by four, with these being the four layers. So it doesn't really matter which one of these you kick out, but let's focus on this red here and move it up to this position to replace this red. So that three cycle will look like this, just turning the inner layers. And then realign our centers. Now let's take a look at what we have. Everything else is still good. But our last center now, or which was our top face, red is now in out, 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 so the typical one in, three out uh, center uh, case that we want to see. So we can do a shuffle, a left-handed shuffle here, which will bring the blue over to this direction and kicking the orange up, which will hopefully solve this center. And that's how you do it. All right, another last layer walkthrough example. So let's check our edge orientation to see what's uh, flipped the right way. This is good. Red and dark blue is also good. Green and blue is not. And this red and green is not. So we have basically an L case here. Can do it like that. Now let's check. Red and green is good. Blue and blue is good. Blue and green is good. And red and blue is good. Okay, now we have uh, 
this typical case. Okay. Uh, just really kind of hard to uh, visualize some of this stuff, but now they're all in place. And again, we have a slightly different version now uh, where the corners are already in. We don't have a 90 degree center rotation, but we have the easy one. We have a 180. So we're going to use that uh, standard uh, 180 center flip to solve this. And yeah, that's it. Okay, and another last layer example. Let's check our edge orientation. See what's flipped right. This is not. Red and, uh, purple and green is not. This is correct. And this is correct. So we have an L case again, like this. Let's check. Red and green is good. Red and orange is good. And the other two are also good. So now moving on to the corners, which actually do not need orientation, just permutation. Let's move those around. So now we have two in, but we have two out. So I'm glad we ran into this case. So uh, what you can do in this scenario is that uh, two little r algorithm, which I'll put up there now. This is also from my main Supercube tutorial. So we can do that and that will help solve this case here. You do it twice. Okay, and now we'll just uh, proceed like normal. We have a bar case again, it looks like. Okay, so our edges are now put into place again. And we'll take a look at the corners. We have a more typical uh, one in three out case. Whoops. Okay. So the corners are taken care of, and we just have a 180 center rotation. And that's how you solve that case. So I think that about covers it for all the possible cases that you'll run into on this. Uh, hopefully that wasn't uh, too fast for you to follow, but hopefully there's enough examples that you can kind of just pick and choose and rewatch whatever you need to to understand this. And uh, I highly recommend that you sticker a 6x6 like this yourself. It's one of the you know easiest mods you can do. It's just a sticker mod, but it makes for a very difficult solve, and uh, hopefully this tutorial can help you solve that. And for the next walkthrough video I'll do, the next logical step up is to work on this one here, which is pretty much the same exact thing, just more. So uh, yeah, keep on out for this video, which will be coming out next, and thanks for watching.